Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. If you watched last week's episode about rolling dice, you might have seen something that caught you off guard if you hadn't already heard about today's topic. That's right, if you can roll a dice electronically, well, that must mean that there's some sort of way that you can use an electronic device in a tournament match, something that generally wasn't allowed before. Call me an old fogey, but I remember the good old days when Magic didn't have to worry about having a smartphone policy because smartphones hadn't been invented yet. In addition to radically changing the trading and card aspects of this TCG, the game aspect has also seen a dramatic shift. The newest MTR has an updated electronic device policy, and in today's daily ruling, I'm going to be going through that policy and some of the implications that it has. Ready? Let's get started. The first thing I wanted to talk about was die rolls. And if you didn't see my video last week, I had some concerns about the integrity of electronic substitutes for rolling dice. Suffice to say, if you have a little bit of computer programming experience, it wouldn't be that hard to write an app and dream up whatever odds you wanted to for die rolls. Now, it would be pretty difficult to detect that, so if your opponent wants to roll a die on an app and it's one you've never heard of before, I would recommend asking them to use something like searching roll a d20 on Google or going to random.org to simulate the die roll. Using a trusted source like these would be a lot harder to manipulate. The next big thing I could see making a big change is oracle lookups. In the past, if you wanted to look up what the text of an opponent's card was, for example if they were using a foreign or textless one, the only way to do that would be to call for a judge, wait for them to come over, and have the judge look it up. Now it's a little bit more streamlined because you can just do that job yourself. You could go to the wizard's website and look it up on Gatherer, or if you want to play like the judges do, you might want to look into a more fully featured app. The ones that I have the most experience with would include Android's MTG Familiar and Judge Core, or iOS's MTG Guide. Any of those would probably do a great job. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is something that goes along with this, and in honesty, I have a little bit of conflicted feelings about it. I'm talking about looking up rulings. If you've ever looked up a card on Gatherer, you probably have seen that you can scroll down and look up some card rulings related to that card. Or, you know, you could always just go to Reddit or Google and type in the ruling that you're trying to look for. You can do this in-game as long as you're okay with your opponent watching you do it. However, there are a couple of concerns that I wanted to voice about doing this sort of thing. The first one is related to time. After you were looking something up on Gatherer, well, maybe you didn't see it, so you wanted to look things up on Google. If you're in a convention center with lots of other people using the same type of internet as you are, well, this could be a lot slower than, you know, just calling the judge and asking them. The other problem that I can see with this is accuracy. If you're only looking on Gatherer and you're only looking at the rulings for cards that were released within the last couple of years, you probably are okay. However, even wizards can't maintain a database of thousands of rulings and have them all be guaranteed to be correct. It wouldn't be feasible for someone on wizard staff to go through every single Gatherer ruling every time they change the rules and make sure none of them were outdated. On a related note, if you see any stuff on Judging for the Winds channel that is outdated, I urge you to contact me at judgingftw at gmail.com so that I can make an appropriate change. So if even the official wizard's website isn't going to be right 100% of the time, you know Google and Reddit aren't going to be doing any better. I know that judges make mistakes too, but I'd like to think that the average judge is at least as good as the average person on the internet. I also know there are some judges out there who basically just do this anytime they take a ruling, a practice I'd like to publicly discourage. That said, my best advice to players is not to put 100% stock in the rulings that you find on the internet if you're going to go this route. And if you aren't completely convinced, then definitely call a judge and get a human opinion on this case. The last major thing that I expect to see change as a result of this policy is a lot more people using their phone as a life point tracker. I could maybe see a judge arguing that this was a method that was easy to change accidentally, especially if you have one where you have to only push a button one time in order to get a significant life point change and there's no record of what the most recent life point changes were. However, I think most judges are going to be okay with this. As always, the head judge is the final word, so if they say otherwise, then you can't use this method in a tournament that you're playing in. It's also legal for you to take phone calls during a match. Actually, this is not part of the policy that's changed. It's always been legal for players to take brief personal phone calls during a match, and this rule was invented for people who are on call, or whose wife is pregnant and expecting any day, or who have some other kind of personal life situation that they might need their phone for. Just be sure you let your opponent know what's up. And finally, after all these things that you can do, here's one that you can't. It is not legal for you to use an electronic device capable of communicating with another person 
during the drafting or deck building phases of a limited tournament, for obvious game integrity reasons. This is also something that hasn't changed, but I wanted to bring it up here just in case people were thinking that they could use electronic devices whenever they wanted, and that was part of the new policy. It certainly is not. And that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again tomorrow for another daily ruling, but until then, I hope you have a great day.